Hey y'all, Gabriela here. It's great to be with you tonight. Uh, and welcome to this series that Gadi is putting on. It's a series highlighting chefs and recipes from the African diaspora. Thank you all for putting this together. Um, it's really an honor to be included as part of this. A uh, little bit about me, as I said, my name is Gabriela Alvarez. I am based in Brooklyn, New York. For those of you who know Brooklyn, I'm in Los Sures, I'm in Williamsburg. Um, a long, long standing community of Puerto Ricans based in here uh, or based out here. And so that is where I am. And my family is Puerto Rican. Um, I am of Puerto Rican descent. I'm of Caribbean descent. And hopefully, as you know, that is part of the African diaspora. Um, I, as you can see, I am mixed. And so with my food, with my understanding of plant medicine and everything that the plants have to offer us both on the table and in our medicine pantries, uh, find that it's super important to not let the natural evolution of food and such to lose the history that's there. So I really kind of have been studying and learning from people from all over the world who are of African uh, ancestry, learning how they use what ingredients, uh, recipes that they've been making, and just learning more about Puerto Rican food. I think there's like national cuisines, but we really get to know where the food comes from, what the lineage is, what the stories are. And so today um, I'm sharing a recipe that is called Ganoas. A um, little while ago, I um, studied at the, I learned to cook, you know, a little bit with my family, um, kind of a lot of bit, but, you know, as a young, like, young woman, I was like, I don't want to be in the kitchen. I don't want to do that. And it wasn't until I was a young adult that um, that's me. That's me as a little one um, celebrating my like Puerto Rican culture, my Puerto Rican identity. Um, but it wasn't until I was a young adult that I decided that I actually wanted to kind of go back to the kitchen and that I really am passionate about food and I'm passionate about the power of food in all of our lives, like we all hopefully right get to and have to eat every single day. And we all get to and hopefully, right, can make that food nourish us and feed our lives and feed our families and our friends. Um, so yeah, I went to the Natural Gourmet Institute, which doesn't exist anymore, but this is a super cute photo of us on our graduation sort of week or something. It was a little bit before graduation day. Um, but there I learned like food as medicine. It was just a crash course on food as medicine. And I'm so grateful to my time there. And then the years afterwards, there was sort of a period of like decolonization, a period of understanding both like what I had learned with my culinary schools and like these ingredients that are really healthy for you and how to do the preparation. And then combining the sort of history that I have with my family and cooking with platanos and cooking with yuca and cooking with, you know, sofrito and whatever it might be and putting that all together. And then within that being like, wow, what really are the stories and what are the who are the people that I have to bring with me uh, with these recipes um, and with me, you know, as I walk, as I walk forward in my life. Um, so actually, will you pull that photo back up again? Because that photo is, um, it was in Detroit and it was a photo of a, a dish um, that we were making of a pastelon. A pastelon is kind of similar to what we're making today or what the video is going to show today a pastelon is like a lasagna and instead of like pasta right which a lot of times we think of lasagna having like pasta and then the fillings and the cheese um yeah if you zoom in there there's like a sweet plantain the sweet plantain replaces the pasta and it's a common dish that um yeah i've eaten a lot in puerto rico and it's got similar ingredients of like plantain uh there's usually ground meat very often it's like ground beef there's cheese, there's sofrito, onion, garlic, all the flavors, all the like popular common flavors um, in the Caribbean, in the diaspora. Um, and so this dish, if you get inspired of like switching up the format a little bit, you can probably, you can use similar ingredients um, to, to make like a pastelon if you wanted to. But today we're focusing on canoas. Um, and I, I love canoas. I mean, I'm obsessed with platanos, honestly, like, when I have a choice, I'm just like, let's make something with platanos. So I knew I wanted to make something with platanos. And we're highlighting specifically the African diaspora. And platanos really do come from Africa. And there are so many ingredients that we eat in the Caribbean that do. Platanos is my favorite and one that we get to highlight today. Um, so canoa is also the word for, uh, it's like the word for a canoe. Um, 
And so we basically are making a canoe with the platano and inside the canoe, we're stuffing um, lots of delicious things. And similar to the pastelon, it's usually stuffed with ground beef, sofrito, onion, garlic, all of the things. And then on top there's cheese and it's great. It's delicious. It's wonderful. Um, I sort of take my work to just add other options for people, right? Like we can have canoas, of course, if that's your jam, do it, wonderful. If you're like, ooh, I can't eat cheese. What else, you know, what else can you do? If you're like, ooh, I can't eat meat. What else can you do? If you're like, oh, I haven't had my greens today. What else can you do? Um, and so I was thinking about what to put into the canoa. And I have a really dear friend, a shout out to Amani O, who is a poet and farmer uh, based in upstate New York. And they, you should check out their work. They're really awesome. And they have a, a poem called uh, Platanos and Collard Greens. I hope I got the title. It's either Platanos and Collard Greens or Collard Greens and Platanos. Um, and they just talk about their identity as someone who is half African American and half Panamanian and sort of that combination, like what it is to have sort of these different cultures represented through food in one person, right? In like who we are. Um, and so Platanos and Collards was the direction that I decided to go in because um, I've always just thought that combination is really really yummy. And so let's cut to ingredients and we'll kind of walk through what the ingredients are. And the ingredients, uh, the sort of list of ingredients and um, the, the full recipe will be listed on the website, on the Gadi website. Y'all can check that out. And um, maybe Maybe Kat, you can show me a little link in the chat so I can say it directly. But as I said, we are using platanos. We are using collard greens. I decided to go with uh, cremini mushroom, onion, garlic, thyme, and smoked paprika. I'm obsessed with smoked paprika. I'll put it in like anything. And then we've got some veggie broth. Uh, veggie broth just kind of like brings up all the flavors of everything. So here we go with prep. And this is like a new format. So I hope y'all are enjoying like the talk through with all the video. So we start with our collard greens. Collard greens, um, I was told once that green, leafy greens are like the lungs of our planet. And so they're really good for like us to breathe. Like they're really important um, for us to just have life, like that life, that chlorophyll, that, those lungs, it's really important. So I can see, you can see I'm pulling the leaf all of, off of the stems. And it's sort of this fun technique, you just pinch and pull. And then I like to stack up all of the leaves as you're seeing, and then I fold and I roll. I always tell people you're rolling like a cigar. Think of like a cigar, how would you kind of like roll a cigar? And then from there, you're going to cut these thin strips as you see on the video. Um, and you're gonna end up with these long strips. So usually what I'll do, hopefully in a moment it'll show it, You'll I'll like chop, yep, I'll flip, and then I'll chop like a few there so that I don't have these long strips, but I just have these like, chunks, right? These like rectangle chunks. And it's just a way to kind of chop everything quickly. Um, then you're probably going to want to wash your greens. Um, and whenever I wash greens, whether it's like collards or any herb like mint or whatever it might be, you want to put it in water, swish it around like that. And then you're pulling your greens up and out of the water. A lot of people want to like pour the water out, but then all the dirt you just swished around gets back on your greens. So you Pro tip, don't do that. Just bring your greens swish up and out. Um, that's a really good way to wash your greens. And nowadays, my sister, I'm not so good as it, but she is washing her greens with a little bit of white vinegar too, just because there's so much, right, with COVID stuff going around. Uh, I decided to use cremini mushrooms for this, as I said, um, and I usually give them a, a wipe, as you can see, with a paper towel, so that um, I'm not dunking them in water because mushrooms absorb a lot. So I don't want them to absorb water. I want them to absorb flavor. So I'm just gonna give them a little wipe down. And you can see that dirt is really coming off. It's a wet paper towel. You could also use a wet towel if you don't use paper towels and wanna save paper. Um, but then I, you can see I cut it in half so that I can lay it flat. That way it's not like rolling around all over the board. I don't want my veggies rolling around the board because then I might cut myself. But once I cut it in half, I lay them flat down and then I start to cut my slices. So you'll see right here. Yep, cut, flat, and then I start to cut my slices. Um, mushrooms are awesome. I, I mean, there's actually this do documentary called like Fantastic Fungi or something like that that I've got on my watch list because I haven't quite studied, but mushrooms are really, brilliant like 
species on our planet that just have such amazing communication skills amongst themselves and have such amazing healing properties. It's like, there's just so much to know. I'm like, I don't know if there's any human on the planet that knows everything, um, but they're a really good substitute for meat. Like they've got, you know how mushrooms are kind of chewy? Um, I like I like using mushroom because instead of ground beef, I don't want it to be like something that just, like beans can sometimes get soft, but mushrooms have that like meaty texture. Um, the pastelon that y'all saw a photo of before, we actually, instead of chopping, we put it all in the food processor and the mushroom got like chopped up in the food processor. So it wasn't slices, another option. We've got our time here. Time is amazing. And you can see that I am wrapping it in a bow in like a bouquet. So this is a little bouquet that we're gonna put in so all the flavor gets into our food. And then you'll see at the end, we're gonna pull it out really easily. It's so much easier than taking all the leaves off or putting the stems in loose, and then you have to pick all the stems out. That's another sort of like tip that uh, folks who cook a lot use. It's called a bouquet garni in, in French sort of culinary terms, but I'm sure there's other names for the same type of thing, um, but it's just like a tip. And uh, you can see here, I'm also showing you, that's how you would take the leaves off, kind of pinch at the top and pull it all down. Then we've got our onions. Um, I'm sort of doing a little dice there. I won't talk that all the way through. You can kind of just watch it. It's a little mesmerizing, but you eventually want to get to a small dice so that you just have these small little cubes in your food. And ideally you want them to all be uniform so that you don't have like one piece of onion that's giant and one is small. And then you think all the onions are cooked, but actually the giant onion like isn't really all the way cooked. So in general, when you're cutting, even if you use a different technique to get to a dice, um, you want it, and by dice, I mean a cube. Uh, you want all your cubes, all your onion cubes to be the same size. And I like to use all of the onion as much as possible. And I've actually recently been making stock with my leftover, like with the top of that onion. Um, so we've got garlic. Garlic also is amazing. Great for your blood pressure. Great. It's like an antifungal. So any sort of fungus stuff you got going on, it's wonderful for. And I just usually cut like really simple slices and then I'll kind of chop it all up at the end. You'll see in a moment. Um, but you can see that I'm going to put my hand right on top of the knife so that it's safe and move it, move it across until I get it to a really nice small mince. Um, so that it, I don't have like big chunks of garlic. If you're into big chunks of garlic, please, by all means, do a larger, a larger mince. Um, really cooking is fluid. It's really whatever you like to do. Um, but garlic is life. I mean, the more garlic, the better. And you'll see, it's kind of a lot of garlic, but you'll, it's, it brings out a lot of good flavor. Are we done with our prep? I think we're done with our prep. So at this point, I like to do, it's what we call like mise en place. Not, again, another like French term. A lot of sort of culinary terms are French because European people kind of imposed all of that in there. You know, they were like, we're gonna use our language, we're gonna use our things. That's not to say that like other people didn't do that. But when you hear me talking French, that's the reason why is because a lot of like in culinary schools and a lot of kitchens, just all of the language is, it's, it's, it's a lot of French. Um, but a mise en place is uh, it's sort of like putting everything in place. So, so rather than like having your kitchen, everything is all over the place, you're like, oh no, I'm not, you know, it's supposed to say garlic next, but I don't have my garlic ready and you have to turn the stove off and it just becomes, you're all overwhelmed and your cook time gets messed up. Always prep everything ahead, prep your onion, prep your garlic. And then you have all these cute little bowls or maybe one plate with everything on top, whatever works for you in your kitchen, in your space, just have everything prepped and then you turn on the stove and you start going. Of course, there's like exceptions for that if, I don't know, you have to like do something different, but that is the general rule. So let's jump to the stove, shall we? Sweet, heating things up, very cute. All right, so um, you can see I'm using cast iron. I love cast iron. It just heats things up really evenly, but any like saute pan you have is fine. Uh, you just saw me put a little bit of oil in. You're gonna let it heat up. You don't want it to be smoking. You don't want it to burn, but once it's warm and sort of glistening, you're gonna start with your onions and you're just gonna let those saute. I like to sprinkle a little salt. Am I gonna do it? Yes. I sprinkle a little salt always at the beginning with onions. It helps bring out the water. 
it brings out the water so that the onions can cook better. Then I'm, see, I'm taking about half the garlic, about half the garlic, saute that in there, give it another minute or two, let it do its thing. You could set some good vibes, some intention, have some music on, do your thing. And then I'm going in with my washed and chopped collards. And collards is not something that I grew up eating a lot of. I like really learned that from, um, in particular, in my experience, from like African-American siblings that grew up around here and that was really in their cuisine. So shout out to all the people who have been teaching me about how to prepare and cook collards. Um, this is like a really quick preparation. So I'm sure there's some folks out there who are like, oh, this is not how you make collards. Um, but it, we're really just kind of cooking them for a while so that they soften. Um, and then we're gonna mix it in with some other ingredients. I've got some paprika there. Again, I like paprika a lot. And it's just really, this is just like really simple. Um, not a lot of ingredients. So you can just kind of make it like on a regular, you know, it doesn't have to be super complicated. In my second saute pan, I heated up some oil again and I'm just putting in the garlic. Um, again, I add a little bit of salt and let that kind of like saute for a moment. And this is where I'm gonna be actually preparing my mushroom because my mushrooms cook a lot faster than my collards. Collards are like pretty um, fibrous. Like you gotta really like, if you know, if you're eating it raw, like you gotta chew them. Um, and so they need more time to cook, which is why I started them first. But on the mushroom side, I'll do that second because they need not even, they need like a few minutes to cook and then they're ready to go. Um, so I added the, I added the thyme, I added the mushroom and I'm just gonna like let that, let that cook. I've got a cover on there, which will help it sort of cook faster for both the collards and the mushroom, let them do their thing. And again, like send them love. Like sometimes I'll just put my hands over a pot and be like prayer to the moment, prayer to family, prayer to friends, prayer to the larger collective. Cooking is alchemy, cooking is magic. And um, I think we all know that when you cook food that's like made with love or like something else, you can really feel it. So I encourage you to like try that out and just try that at home. Um, so that's sort of the filling, right? We've got the collards, we've got the mushroom, they're all kind of cooking, doing their thing. And eventually it'll get combined, but uh, you just have your, your, your filling. But as I mentioned, there's a canoe, right? There's a canoa, the platano, my favorite. Um, and so we gotta make our platano. So let's go to the next video. Platano prep. So I used a platano that was, you can see it's black. It's like super, super ripe, which I love. I'm like the riper, the better. Um, but I cut the ends off and then I do a thin slit really carefully with your knife, not all the way through the platano, but just as, you know, as, as much as possible just through the skin so that you can peel it off. Um, and then you're leaving it whole because we're literally gonna fry the whole thing as one piece. And so if you can see, you saw that skin was really black. Just remember that in your mind, um, cause I wanted you to see the outcome of what that platano, but it's it's ripe. Um, I've got this caldero here. I don't know how to say caldero in English, but it's like an aluminum frying pan. <laughs> um, and I just, I've got the oil hot. Um, I'm using like a, a canola oil, a safflower oil, something that can take high heat that won't burn. And I put my platano right in there. And I wanna take it out. You can kind of see if you look in there, it's like a golden, a golden brown color. Now, remember I told you to look how black the skin was? That platano was like so ripe. I had to be really careful getting it out, but I just let, you know, let the oil soak up really carefully. And that's our canoe. I might've used a platano that was like one or two days less ripe, which would have been ideal, but. So you just saw I took the time out and any little stems that maybe got pulled out of that bouquet that we made, you just take it right out because you already got the flavor. You don't actually need the greens or the leaves, right? And then we've got our platano. We've got our fillings on the left. And I'm just gonna cut through the platano to make, make that room for the canoe, right? That's our canoe, our canoa. And inside we put our stuffing. So I'm gonna go for the greens probably first. There they are. And maybe use a smaller spoon than that. I think I got a little ambitious with my big serving spoon. Um, but yeah, you're gonna have all your greens in there. You see the garlic and the onions in there, and then you can put your mushroom. If you want, you can also combine your greens and your mushroom so it's all mixed up and you can put that in. 
if you have like a sauce, if you do eat cheese and you want to put some cheese on top, um, that's absolutely like your prerogative. I've been doing vegan these days, so I left it with just a little bit of, and if we can pause the video right there, that would be amazing. Yes, thank you. Um, we've got like the canoa, we've got the greens, we've got the mushroom. I had a little bit of a red pepper sauce that I had in my fridge, so I added that on top. Um, and then I have a little cilantro on top, like fresh, beautiful cilantro and some greens. This is just the way I like to eat it. It's like, I feel like canoa with like meat and cheese, for me personally, for my body, right, is like, a little bit like special. It's like a little bit every once in a while, but I love platanos all the time and I love collards all the time and I love mushroom all the time. So it's sort of like I can combine this recipe that has been from the African diaspora, from the Caribbean, like from my family, like from my people and sort of use um, ingredients of the Northeast, right? Use ingredients that are here that I know like my body responds well to and still have like that marriage, right? That's just always what I'm seeking. Like, how do I marry who I am and where I am through my food and like feed myself? Um, thank you, Kat, for pausing that. Um, but that's basically it. That's our beautiful, our beautiful canoa. Um, thanks y'all for watching. Um, what do I wanna say? I just wanna say like, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you make all kinds of canoas. I've recently been making um, really into pizza. Like my thing is pizza right now. I'm like every other night I want pizza. And I will make, I've never made the same pizza twice. It's always different things. And so with a canoa, it's like, you can do, you can use your imagination. You can do whatever you want. You can think about, oh, I can't eat mushroom. I'm allergic to mushroom. And I want to eat black beans instead, like do it with black beans, do a different kind of protein, or like, I'm obsessed with tofu, or I want to do meat and collards, like mix and match, do whatever you want. Um, but I hope that it just like, gets you inspired, gets you going. I know that times are hard. I know that we want to get fed by other people. Um, but we get to really like do this for ourselves. And we get to be who we are, um, and take care of ourselves and one another. So with that, Thank you all for watching. Again, the recipe is on the Gadi website, the, the ingredients and sort of the steps that come with that. So I hope you'll check it out. Um, send photos. My Instagram is Gabriela Alvarez Martinez. Um, send them to me, send them to Gadi. Just send photos of what you make. I would love to see it. Okay, y'all have a good one. Bye.